Welcome to the Andrew Larry Show, where we analyze companies that are publicly traded on the stock market and where we talk about how much you can make in dividends every year if you invested in dividend paying companies. This channel is geared more towards a beginning investor to teach them how to evaluate companies so that way they can decide for themselves if a company is a good investment or not. If you stick around to the end of this video, I will let you know if today's company, Service Corporation International, if I think they're a good investment or not based on everything that we're going to see in this video. And I'm also going to tell you if I think this share the current share price of $48.90 is a fair share price and if I don't think it's a fair share price what I think the fair share price is and how I figured it out so if you stick around to the end of the video I will tell you that as well before we move on I want to encourage everyone to hit that like button hit the subscribe button and notification bell I post new videos at least every Monday and Friday more often if I can okay so let's get on with the analysis here so service corporation international believe it or not that is a funeral home um, I was in my town, I was just driving around about a week ago and I saw the local funeral home and I thought to myself, you know, I said, I wonder if there are any large funeral home companies that are publicly traded on the stock market. All the funeral homes I've ever seen always seem to be kind of a mom and pop setup. Um, but I wonder if there are any large ones and that are publicly traded and it turns out there are, there are multiple, multiple service corporation international just happens to be one of them. So um, I thought, why not do a, a video on the funeral home industry, if that's if that's the actual name of the industry, um, and and see, you know, how good is it? Is this a good company? Is it not a good company? But what's the deal? So I've never thought of this type of a business before. So I figured, why not? Let's give it a shot. So the first thing I look for in any company is, does it pay a dividend? As you, if you've seen any of my videos, you know I'm a dividend investor. And what I'll do here on Yahoo Finance is scroll down. And we're on the summary page, you can see right here. And you can look at the four dividend and yield. And you see, yes, it does pay a dividend. In fact, uh, Service Corp pays 84 cents per year per share. That's what that 84 cents is. And 84 cents happens to be 1.71% of the current share price. So that's where that percentage comes from. So it's great that they pay a dividend. They'll give you 84 cents per year per share that you own. Um, but I need a little more history on the dividend. So what I like to do is go to dividend.com. We're already on Service Corp's page here and scroll down just a little bit. I want to look to see the consecutive years of dividend increases. It's great that they're paying a the dividend, but I want a company that increases their dividend at least once a year. And we're seeing here only one year of consecutive, uh, so just one year of uh, increases. Um, I like to see at least 10 years. That's my personal preference. One year is obviously one year is obviously falling way short of that, but we'll, we'll take a little deeper dive down to that, uh, farther down the page here. Next thing I look for is if a company has been increasing their dividend for 10 years or more, that's great that they're increasing it, but I like to see about by how much are they increasing it. So I'll call, scroll down here, you got the dividend growth section, a little more centered. All right, so dividend growth section, you can see you got one year annualized growth, all the way up to 20 year annualized growth. If you see zeros here, um, especially in, in the later, especially in the 20 year, maybe even the 10 year, don't sweat it too much. Um, it's, it could be because the company doesn't have a long enough dividend history to populate a percentage there. So don't, don't worry about it. Um, but we're seeing good, good increases here. We got the one year annualized growth. So they, over the last year, they increased their dividend 8.33%. That's awesome. I like to see at least 3% increases every year at a minimum. Uh, more is always better. And you can see these other percentages here, uh, going up to 10 years is, is, very, very good. I like, I like these, I like these increases. Um, now the reason why I'm concerned with the dividend increases is because I want to make sure that the increases are at least keeping pace with inflation. Right now I'm using my dividends to reinvest back into my portfolio to buy more shares and grow it even faster. However, when I'm, when I retire, I will use my dividend income to live off of. I'll stop reinvesting it and use it to pay bills and go on vacations and, and just buy presents for my grandkids and, and do whatever else I want with it. So um, I want to make sure that the dividend increases now are keeping pace with inflation at the very least. So that way my purchasing power down the road is not eaten away by inflation. So these percentages here look very, very good. I'm assuming Service Corp is keeping pace with inflation at, at least. However, there's one thing I like to do just to make sure. And you can see here we've got the SCI payout history. Come down here to view all payout history. Come down to the bottom, however far you can go. Um, let's see here. You can see that 1996 Service Corp, ticker symbol SCI, if you don't know what the SCI stood for. 
is uh, looks like in 1996 it paid out 24 cents per year or uh, per share for that year. So um, we'll come over here to usinflationcalculator.com. I like to punch in the start year, put in the 24 cents, and go ahead and click calculate. Now to keep pace with inflation, Service Corp would have to pay at least 40 cents per year per share. But if you remember over here on Yahoo Finance, they're paying 84 cents per year per share. So they are outpacing inflation by about double. So that's an excellent sign. And I figure they probably were outpacing inflation. I just like to see this. I like to use this calculator real quick. It's very quick, very easy. I just like to see this dollar amount here and compare it to what they're currently paying. paying. Gives me that warm, fuzzy feeling inside, I suppose. So that's the last thing I do with regards to dividend. So what I'll do is I'll come back to Yahoo Finance. I'll click statistics. And what I want to do is make sure our company is profitable. We're here. We're looking at the most recent quarter. That's what MRQ stands for and happens to be the fourth quarter of 2020. And you can see here, we come to the profitability section. I want to look at profit margin, operating margin. TTM just stands for trailing 12 months, if you're curious. And we got a profit margin here, uh, almost 15%. We got just under 24% for operating margin. Excellent percentages here. Overall, what you're looking for here is at least a positive percentage. Negatives are always bad, always, always. Um, now, some companies, by their very nature, will always have low profit margins. So, for example, I invest in Kroger grocery store. Um, typical profit margins for a grocery store are usually 1% to 3%. So, if you're ever looking at a company, you see the profit margin is maybe 1%, 1.5%. You may think, oh, you know, at least they're positive, but that's very, very close to negative. Don't worry about it too much. Um, what I would do is look in to see what a normal profit margin is for that particular industry that that company is in. And you can do that by comparing. You can look at some of the, um, the company's competitors, direct competitors. So like if you're evaluating Coke, you can look at Pepsi and see what their profit margin is. Or look at Dr. Pepper and see what their, their profit margin is. So just to get an idea of the profit margin you're seeing, is it in the ballpark of a normal or is it really low or is it or is it or maybe it's really, really high and it's, they're doing they're doing great. So overall, though, what you're looking for is positive percentages. Next, I look for is management effectiveness. Company has to be managed. Well, it's a must. You have to have it. Um, what I do is look at return on assets, return on equity. And again, these percentages here, you always want to be positive. Higher is always better. Um, negatives are a huge red flag for me. If I see negatives here, I usually will not. I don't think I've ever invested in a company that had negative percentages here, to tell you the truth. Um, negatives are very, very bad, in my opinion. Next, what I look for, I'll come down to the income statement section. Scroll down just a little farther. I look for the quarterly revenue growth. Y over Y means year over year. So they're these numbers are fourth quarter 2020 numbers, so they're comparing fourth quarter 2020 to fourth quarter 2019, just those two quarters. And what they're saying is that the revenue, which is all money coming in before paying any bills, the revenue for fourth quarter 2020 was 14% higher than fourth quarter 2019. You definitely want to see positive percentages here. Positives are always, always good. Negatives, you, negative percentage, definitely under normal circumstances is always bad. However, um, given how crazy 2020 was, so many businesses took a hit because of the economy being shut down. So for the time being, if you are seeing negative percentages here, I wouldn't worry about it too much, especially if it's a small negative, say a 1% or negative 2%. I wouldn't worry about it too much given how crazy things were in 2020 and how hard businesses struggled in, in that year. So, um, if, so if you see negative percentages for now, don't sweat it too much, but I would expect the percentages turn around and go positive, I'd say within the next six months, 12 months or so after the uh, the economies are fully opened and, and COVID is officially in our rear view mirror. So next, what I look for is quarterly earnings growth year over year. Earnings is just not a name for profit. Again, we're comparing fourth quarter 2020 to fourth quarter 2019. And this is saying that the earnings for fourth quarter 2020 were 36.6% higher than fourth quarter 2019. That's amazing. That's fantastic. You always want to see a positive percentage here for sure. Negatives aren't that good at all. Um, but remember, like I said, up here with revenue growth, if you are seeing a small negative right now, especially a small negative, um, it could be because of all the craziness and everything that happened with COVID-19 in 2020. So don't hold it against the company too much right now if you're seeing a negative. 
but it is definitely what you're really looking for is a positive, and this is an excellent positive number to see, positive percentage. Next, what I look for coming down to the balance sheet section, I like to look at the debt. How much debt does a company have? And you see here we got $3.83 billion. Now that is a ton of money. It certainly is. But is this a lot of money for Service Corp? They're, they're a big company. They're not just one mom and pop local uh, funeral home in your hometown. They have funeral homes all over the country. They're up in Canada. They also run cemeteries and other um, after death services. So uh, they're a huge company. So is this number almost $4 billion? Is this a big number for them? And the way you can tell that is by looking at the debt to equity ratio. And with 218, that's not that bad at all. Ideally, what I like to see is, is a debt to equity ratio under 100. But I've invested in companies in the 200s, even in the 300s. Once I hit the 400s, then I start to shy away. Um, it begins to raise the red flag for me. Um, but the higher the number is, once you get past, once you're in the 400s and 5s and 600s, that starts to tell me that whatever number you're seeing here for the debt, that that number is a lot of money. So if this was, say, instead of 218, say it was 2,000, that would tell me that this almost three, almost $4 billion is a huge amount of money for them to take on in debt. It's not good at all. But the fact this is in the low 200s, that tells me that yeah, this this $3.83 billion is not that bad um, as far as their debt load. Uh, they can they could manage this, this debt with minimal risk. To the, to the company overall. So I wouldn't worry about this debt. Remember, um, I like to see anything under 100 ideally, but in the low 200s like this is, isn't a big deal. Scrolling up, next what I look for is financials. Click that. By default, we land on the income statement here. All numbers are in thousands, meaning just take whatever number you see and add three zeros to the right, and that's the true number. And we're looking at annual numbers. So what I'll do, let me, let me scroll to the bottom first real quick. Scroll over. Yahoo Finance always gives you the previous four years of data. You can get more. If there is more, you can get it. If you have a paid subscription to Yahoo Finance, I don't have one. If you want one, by all means, um, I don't think it's necessary. But what I liked here is look at the top line here, total revenue. And what I want to see is the revenue increasing every year. Um, and you can see here it is. Um, minimal, I mean, modest increases, but we're still increasing. That's perfect. That's fine. The bigger the increases are better, but you know we're seeing we're seeing some good steady increases every year. So um, definitely a great thing to see. And the reason why I like to see these increases every year is because if you're going to grow the company, um, the first thing you have to grow is the revenue. You have to start making more sales. Um, and if you're growing the company, good chance, not a guarantee, but a good chance your dividend will grow with it. So that's why I like to see if the company is growing. This is an excellent sign that the company is growing. Next, what I look for, I go over to the cash flow. Again, all numbers are in thousands. Looking at annual. You can flip to quarterly if you want, but we're going to stick to annual. And I'm going to go ahead and hit expand all. That just gives more rows down here that were previously hidden. And scroll all the way to the bottom. And you can see here at the bottom, free cash flow. Just like with revenue, I like to see the free cash flow increasing every year. And it is modest increases, but it's okay. As long as we're increasing. The bigger the increases, the better. You never... Um, more, more free cash flow is never a bad thing, but, um, but we are seeing increases and that's perfect. The reason why this is important to me is because free cash flow, this is the pile of money where your dividends are paid out of. So if this, if this pile of money is growing every year, excellent chance, not a guarantee, but an excellent chance that your dividends will grow with it. If this pile of money is shrinking every year, there's a good chance your dividends will either one get reduced or completely suspended altogether because a company can reduce or suspend its dividend at any time. So that's why dividends are not a guarantee. It's why I keep saying it's an excellent chance, not a guarantee. You've heard me say that twice. That's the reason why, because companies can stop or reduce their dividends at any time they want. So um, in the free cash flow increasing, like you see here, that's a great thing to see. I like it. What I'll do next is I come up to the common stock dividend paid. And this is just the, the money that the, the company paid out in dividends. The number is always negative, so don't worry about that. That's because that's money leaving the company. That's why it's negative. And as you just look at the most recent year, and what I'll do is I'll take, um, let me see here. I will like to see the payout ratio. So I'll take the, the amount they paid in dividends, 137, 392. 
And let's see, we'll divide that by the free cash flow down here. 582.0. And they have a payout ratio of about 23.5%. So meaning of the money available to pay out in dividends, they only paid out about 23.5% of it in dividends. And I like to see these lower payout ratios. Ideally, 50% or under is what I like to see. The reason for that is, is because, let's say, for example, Service Corp, next year, they have their, their free cash flow decreases a little bit. Say it decreases to an even $500 million. Well, it's not a huge deal. It's definitely not a great thing. You like to see the free cash flow increase. But with regards to increasing the dividend, it's not a big deal because in 2020, they only pay out 23.5% of the available money. So if they lose some of the free cash flow and it goes and they're Free cash flow for the year falls to 500 million even they still have plenty of room to increase the dividend despite the fact their free cash flow went down so when companies start paying out very high payout ratios say 80 90 100 percent then that starts to worry me because if they do have a small decrease in their free cash flow then that's going to affect their ability to increase their dividend um, in the following year so I do like to see these lower payout ratios. 23.5%, I think, is perfect. I, I definitely like it. So what I do here on this page also is I like to look at this chart right here on the side. It's financials, and we're looking at annual numbers. And all this is, is revenue and earnings. Um, revenue, we know, is increasing every year. We saw that over on the income statement. But the earnings, I like to see if the earnings increase every year as well. Remember, earnings is just profit. No name for profit. And ideally, we like to see is the earnings going up every year with the revenue. But uh, we do have some two years in a row of revenue decreases here. Um, decrease in 2018, decrease in 2019. However, it did rebound in 2020, so that's good. Overall, I think we have we have about uh, 547 million roughly, and then we have about 516 million. So overall, it's a slight, very slight downward trend, but it did start to rebound here from 2019 to 2020. So not a bad thing. Um, hopefully, in 2020, they can uh, increase this earnings. Uh, a little bit more and, and have a, start to have an upward trend starting from 2017. So I do like to take a look at this chart just to see where the earnings are at and um, if they're trending down or trending up. All right, so next thing I look for is I'll come over to E-Trade. E-Trade is my broker. It's who I use. You don't have to use E-Trade. I'm not promoting them. Um, however, if you do choose to use another online broker or you already are, you still can come to E-Trade and do this. You can see I'm not logged onto my account. You can see that up here. So just search for Service Corp or whatever company you're researching. And then I go to the fundamentals page right here and I scroll down. There's three areas I like to look at. First is the financial strength. And I like to read these little paragraphs underneath. And it says here, Service Corp's debt to equity ratio indicates that it has been more aggressive with using debt to finance growth than 75% of its peers in the same industry. So it's not a big deal to me. I do like to look at this. The, the debt to equity ratio is 218. So that's a debt to equity ratio that I'm comfortable with. So the fact that they're more aggressive with using debt to finance growth than, uh, than definitely the majority of their industry peers doesn't worry me too much. Next is profitability. And this paragraph reads, Service Corp's gross margin is less than 69% of other companies in the same industry, which means it has less cash to spend on business operations as compared to its peers. Not the best thing, not the best thing. However, um, they do seem very profitable and their debt to equity ratio is low. Um, their earnings were rebounding from 2019 to 2020, so that doesn't concern me too much, but I would hope that they improve this going forward in the future. As indicated by the operating margin, Service Corp controls its costs and expenses better than 93% of its peers. Fantastic, that's perfect. You gotta control the cost, it's very, very important. Next is management effectiveness, and this paragraph reads, The return on equity for Service Corp shows that it is able to reinvest its earnings more efficiently than 86% of its competitors. 86% of its competitors in the same industry. Fantastic. That does not surprise me. Given that the return on equity, you can also see it right here, is nearly 30%. So this, is, this doesn't surprise me, and this is a very, very good thing that the management knows what they're doing, and that all the... All the Employees in the in the business overall too know what they're doing and they're executing effectively on uh, on the plans that uh, that management sets out for them. So uh, that's definitely a great thing. Overall, would I invest in Service Corp? The answer is yes, I would. Um, the uh, the dividend history. Uh, one thing I forgot to show you: the dividend history. Um, even though it did say, I looked at this earlier. Even though it did say that one year consecutive growth. If you actually check out the actual dividends they paid. 
they did have a few years where they were stagnant, where they um, they paid, they didn't have any increases at all, but they have been increasing probably for close to 10 years or so, uh, right around the 10-year mark. So I, um, that that one year consecutive growth, that, that must be a miss, uh, uh, misprint up above. They've actually been increasing for about 10 years. So their dividend history looks looks good. Um, they've been increasing it. They um, they have they're profitable. Their earnings did rebound from 2019 to 20 or 2019 to 2020. So I'm not too concerned with the slight downward trend of the earnings. But the revenue is increasing every year. The free cash flow is increasing every year. The management seems to be very effective. So overall, yes, I would invest in Service Corp. But is that forty eight dollar? Remember we had. Well, I got the sir out where it's right here. I clicked on summary. Uh, $48.90. Is that a fair share price? Is that overpriced, undervalued? What is it? So I went ahead and figured that out. And here on this Excel spreadsheet, the way I figure out if a company is priced fair or not, what I'll do is I'll go back to 2007, assuming they have dividend history that goes back that far. And I'll find out what the dividend was, the yearly dividend was on January 1st, 2007, and what the closing share price was. And I'll do it again on June 1st, 2007. And January 1st, June 1st, all the way down the line. Keep doing January 1st and June 1st till I get to January 1st, 2021. And from there, once I have the, the yearly dividend on that date and what the closing share price was on that date, I'll use those two numbers to figure out what the, uh, the dividend yield is. So I just take the yearly dividend, divide it by the share price, and that gives me the dividend yield. And then I take all these dividend yields and I average them together. So you can see here, I'm averaging all the dividend yields together. And for Service Corp, I came up with an average dividend yield of 1.77% going back to January 2007. So then I'll take this average dividend yield. The current dividend that they're paying per year happens to be 84 cents. So I'll take the current dollar amount dividend that they're paying per year and divide that by the average dividend yield. Yep, 77. And so, that which gives me a share price of $47.46. So, I think that's what the fair share price is. We are very, very close to that, $48.90. So, a few pennies over value, but definitely in the ballpark, I would say, of being a, uh, a, a, a fair fair uh, value for the company. Um, so, that's what I got for everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Remember, don't forget to hit, the, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, notification bell. Post new videos at least every Monday and Friday. More